Citizens protest meeting, Tuesday in Cottonwood. Hear Jason Roach speak against crime. Cottonwood town with much crime, Chief Miss Too much. Yet most of its citizens are decent, law-abiding. Ah, but them afraid of outlaw guns. Jason wrote plenty brave men to speak against gunmen. Hey, you're right, Tonto. I'd like you to ride into town, see what the citizens are saying. Then meet me back here later. I say to you, we must drive crime from Cottonwood. I tell you, outlaws must go. They've made a mockery of law and order. We must fight them, drive them from our sight. People of Cottonwood, remember what George Washington said. Our enemy leaves us only the choice of brave resistance or abject submission. We must conquer or die. Ah, who cares about George Washington? There. Look at the worst sinner of all, Dave Spence. Look at the killer who brazenly mocks the immortal words of the father of our country. I can handle you, you loudmouth reformer. You dare to threaten me, you dirty gunman? Look at the braggart who is evil in body and spirit, whose ugly little soul is dark and stained. Oh, oh, That's a speech from Dave Spence. You want to hear any more? Try following me. Father. Avenge me, Mark. Take up my fight. Who lives by the gun? Shall die by the gun. Tell him. What happened? Him outlaw. Killed Jason Rose. Close, keep it heavy. Yes, Tunnel. Let's keep him busy. He's got a good position. But if you cover me, I could rush him from here. Not too dangerous, keep it heavy. We can't let him keep us pinned down. I may have idea. Look there. Me climb there. Not high enough. You couldn't hit him from there. No, not hit him, but keep him busy, maybe. Watch yourself. No, thanks. I'm happy right here. Wait! Wait, stop! I give up! I give up! Throw out your gun! And your six gun, too! Lock him up tight, Pete. That's it. Old jailer and the judge is too old to be of much use. That's all the law we got left in this town, mister. Unless you've changed, Judge Talbot. That's a lot of law for any man's town. Well, I can jail him and hang him, but I'm past the age where I can chase him down and arrest him. We owe you some thanks for kitchen spends. No thanks to us. Can't you hire a new marshal? Uh, either everybody in town is afraid of little Dave Spence or they owe Ben Jordan some money. Jordan partners with Spence? 
Yeah, they run the town. Speak to the devil. Meet Ben Jordan. Judge, who is this man? And what right has he to arrest Dave Spence? Every citizen has a right to arrest a criminal. Citizens arrest Ben? It's all very legal. Oh, I'll vouch for the masked man and his Indian friend. Completely law-abiding, both of them. Law-abiding? With a mask? I call this mighty funny business. And you would, Ben. Well, what's Dave's bail? And no bail on a murder charge. No bail? You'd better change your mind, Judge. I can change my mind, but I can't change the law. Now, Dave Spence will get a fair trial. Then we'll hang him. The rope isn't made that'll hang Dave Spence in Cottonwood. Oh, shucks. Made me drop a stitch. You know, my nerves ain't what they used to be. You shouldn't play with a derringer, Judge. <laughs> Nosy? Baker. <laughs> Tano, I'd like to call on that reformer's son before we leave Cottonwood. Wait a minute. I'll go with you. You know Mark's all alone now. You just might need a little help. I don't need any help. As long as I have this. The righteous wrath that Jefferson made blaze in freedom's name. I want to thank you for delivering my father's murder to me. I didn't deliver him to you, Mark. I delivered him to the law. The law stands for justice. And justice demands that I kill him. Does it? Not in my book. Now look here, Mark. You get that nonsense out of your head and put that gun away before you hurt yourself. Oh, I won't hurt myself, Judge. Here. Road agent spin. Now, where'd you ever learn that? My father taught me two things. Speed with a gun and respect for the great men of American history. All my life, I've wondered why those two things went together. But now I know. It was to prepare me for this day when I shall avenge a great American by destroying his killer. Now, you gentlemen, excuse me. Mark, wait. <laughs> Sorry I had to hit him. Oh, don't feel too bad. You had to do it for his own sake. That poor kid, you know, he's one of the kindest, most gentle youngsters in Cottonwood. His father's death was quite a blow to him, I guess. It was more than that, Judge. Oh, it'll pass. I'll get the doc over. He'll be all right tomorrow. I doubt it. I doubt it very much. You worried about that Mark boy, Kimisami? Yes, Tano, I am. He's sick. Sick in the mind. Ah, uh, good and bad all mixed up. You use words of wise men, but give them different meaning. Exactly. I hate to think of what might happen if Dave Spence goes free. No chance, Kimisabi. Jordan and Spence control town, but not control judge. All right, come on, man. Come on, get in here. Don't be all day about it. Get in those seats. Get in those seats. Hurry up here. Now take those hats off, all of you. Just watch that Mark Root. I don't like a look in his eye. Let's hear from the jury. Jury, you reached a verdict. We sure have, Your Honor. We find Dave is innocent. Innocent? Half the men on that jury saw him kill my father. Guilty little murder. What well, gives you the special right to go on punished from this crime? Do you call this justice? His day has been so powerful in this town that law and order can't touch him. It was cold-blooded murder. Are you going to let him quiet you? Dave through first. And I ain't forgetting that it was your gun he found so handy. I rule that Mark here shot in self-defense. Case closed. Free of the court. Take it easy, Mark. It's all over now. Just begun. I've drawn the sword of righteous wrath. And with it, I shall clean up this town. There never was a town more in need of it. You mean what you say, and I think you do. I mean every word of it. How'd you like to wear this Marshal Star? Proudly, sir. Proudly. Thank you. 
You're making a serious mistake, Judge. Mark Rode is not a rational man. He draws fast, he shoots straight, and he hates crime. That's everything we need in a marshal. You've given a sick man the authority to kill. Ah, kill outlaw. Maybe innocent men, too. Oh, not him, not Mark Rode. He's a good boy. And to make room upon the earth for honest men to live in. Take a look, Judge. Take a good look what's in store for the town of Cottonwood. And now I say, make room for honest men. And let others watch out. Why don't you raise our new speech-making marshal, Stacy? I like breathing. Scared? Not of you, Ben. You could beat him, Stacy. Maybe, maybe not. There's one man who could. Baxter Crow. Fastest gun north of Mexico. Until he quit to play farmer. It's the first trip he's made to Cottonwood in some time. Why don't you uh, tip off the new marshal that Baxter Crow the killer? Let's come back. <laughs> You're a smart weasel, Ben. But you got cheated on that vest. <clears throat> Baxter! Well, Mark, I haven't seen you since you were a button. Uh, how's your father? Dead. Shot down by a murdering gunfighter like yourself. You're riding the wrong horse, Mark. I hung up my guns a long time ago. After you killed how many men? I gunned down some men in gunfights, yes. But that's all past. I paid for my mistakes. I'm a farmer now, and I'd like to forget about guns. Forget. But not repent. Mark, Mark, I, I've got enough worries. The drought has ruined my crops, and I need a big loan or I'll lose my ranch. Baxter, you get out of Cottonwood, fast. After I see the banker. Now. But I told you I need a loan. Now! What are you trying to do, drive me to take up my guns again? Are you trying to make me steal instead of borrow? Now that you're wearing that badge, I should think it would be your duty to help men go straight, not drive them crooked. I'm driving you just one way, Baxter. That's out of Cottonwood. I'll ride. Good for you, Marshal. Nobody's pulling the wool over your eyes. Stacy, I think tonight's a good time to hit the bank. While we're enjoying our loot, <laughs> we can watch while that new marshal goes gunning after Baxter Crow. Somebody right for him, Jimmy. I wonder who it is. It's been a long time, Baxter. Too long. If I wasn't so miserable, this would make me very happy. You'd better have some coffee. Tell me what's wrong. and murder. I destroyed this unholy sinner, but Baxter Crow got away. Baxter? We just see him riding home. He was to circle back then. It couldn't have been Baxter, Mark. I say it was. He told me he was going to steal from the bank. That's what I get for being merciful. Him dead, he must have me by name. Smell of horses like stable. Stable? Time to ride to Baxter's ranch as fast as you can. Tell him to hide out before Mark comes looking for him. What do you do, Kimasami? I'm going to Ben Jordan's livery stable. I might find the answer there.
You? What are you doing here? I'm here to ask you about a bank robbery. I'm sure you won't mind answering a few questions if you weren't involved in it. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. That looks like a bank robbery. Suppose it is. Stand aside, Jordan. I want to take a look at your safe. No use looking for your guns, mister. I locked them up in my safe. Well, it's no good. Tyler knows I came to see you. Yeah. And that's why it'd be bad if your body was found at my livery stable. You've got to vanish. But it'd be mighty hard to make a man on his horse disappear in town, so I figured to do it the easy way, up here in these hills. What about that money? Well, I'll ride over to Twin Springs and put it in a safe deposit box under a false name and let it cool off. Very clever. But you're underestimating Tonto. Oh, he might find you if he's real good, but chances are it'll take him a while, and by then you'll be bones. Nature works fast in these parts, masked man. Well, come on, we got a long way to go. The nice thing about a skeleton is it's hard to tell who it used to belong to. And it's even harder to prove murder, or who did it. Well, this is it, masked man. It's no use. I'm sorry this happened, Jordan. Funny, I... I had everything figured so good. Then I get licked by a smart horse. Tano, did you warn Baxter Crow? Yes, Kimasabi. Me give him your message. Him in hiding now at Spit Rock. Good. I know Mark. He's gunning for him right now. Ah, uh, if he find him, he'd kill him. Not if I can help it. There's your bank, Robert. You take him to town. I'm going to split rock. I hope I can get there in time to prevent a murder. Uh, you not have gun, Kimisabi. You take mine. Oh, you might need it. Tell the judge I'll get the money to him as soon as I can. Ben Jordan is the guilty man. He confessed to me before he died. No. You're lying. Here's the stolen money. No. No, it was Baxter. Mark, you don't understand. You're sick. You'll be gunning down an innocent man. You're in it with him. You're trying to save him by returning the money, but it won't work. It won't work, I tell you. He's the killer. He's not a killer. But you'll be if you gun him down. I have the right. This badge is my authority, and this gun will back it up. A gun in the hands of an irresponsible lawman is just as bad as a gun in the hands of an outlaw. He's unarmed. He's at your mercy. Just as I am. Mark, think. Think, Mark. But my father... Mark, your father was the last man in the world who'd ever want you to commit a crime in his name. Crime? What do you think you'd say if he saw you like this? A man with a badge, a gun, and a bloodlust in his heart? Me? Bloodlust? Surely among the things he taught you, he must have taught you this. Judge not, that ye be not judged. Yes, he did. He did teach me that. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Easy, Mark. Easy. I 
I'll take care of him. He's going to need a lot more than care, Baxter. He needs treatment. I'll see that this money is returned to the bank. Don't worry. You'll get your loan. Adios. He helped me. I didn't even thank him. You don't need to, son. No one has to thank the Lone Ranger. of the West, a stagecoach driver's job was a hazardous one. In addition to the grueling miles of hard trail, he was always in danger of attack by outlaw bands. Vicious men robbed and plundered for personal gain. Such an outlaw group was the one led by Frank Cameron, a man who in the short space of two months wrote a violent chapter in the history of crime in the Southwest. Cameron gang strikes again. Newspaper headlines told the story as Cameron and his men rode across the state, attacking stages, banks, and express companies. The smallest stage lines, regardless of the amount of cash or gold they carried, were hit by the ruthless outlaws. Posses of experienced lawmen, vigilantes, and angry citizens in all walks of life pursued the Cameron gang throughout the area to no avail. The outlaws were clever enough to elude the most carefully laid traps. large and small businesses alike were crushed by the violence of Cameron's crime wave. Few outlaws, however, had enough nerve and ability to attack a federal stage shipment unless the stakes were high enough. But one million dollars in gold was high enough to attract Frank Cameron. Here they come. And one day on the narrow canyon road, he waited with his men, ready to attempt the biggest crime of his career. The attack was well planned. The outlaws hit fast and effectively. All right, let's have it. Come on. But this time, Cameron's luck had run out. And although he had time to dispose of the gold, he was not clever enough to elude the determined posse that rode his trail. And so within 48 hours after the daring robbery, Trapped in the Dead End Canyon, the outlaw trio surrendered. The violent career of crime had come to an end, and Frank Cameron and his men rode out to face trial, knowing they had no chance of defense against the hundreds of angry victims who had long awaited this moment. Two days later at our campsite in the deserted barn, just outside the state capitol, I waited for Tonto to return with the results of the trial. Kind of like that, don't you, big fellow? I love it, Kimisabe. Cameron Gang sentenced to five years in prison. Did anyone confess to where the gold was hidden? Oh, them not talk. Them questioned by many lawmen. Them say them never tell where gold hidden. Well, I guess they figure a million dollars worth five years of their life. Ah, uh, them pick up gold and then get out of prison. That gold was slated for state funds. It's vitally important that it be recovered. You have plan? Yes, Tano, I have. We've got to get someone inside the prison to gain the gang's confidence. Then maybe Cameron will tell us just where the gold is hidden. Well, that'd not be easy, Kimisame. They're plenty smart. Maybe no a trap. It would have to be someone with the reputation of an outlaw. Someone they wouldn't suspect. I'm afraid we don't have many outlaw friends. Uh, me no man for job. Uh, who? Me. Uh, me be plenty mean. If newspaper help us, me get big reputation as outlaw. Then go to prison. It would be dangerous, Tonto. Me know that, but me not worry. We face danger many times. First, we must get the governor's approval of our plan. And governor, our friend, maybe him help us. Oh, I'm sure he will. He's just as anxious to get that gold back as anyone in the state. We'll explain the details of our plan. Then it'll just be a matter of time. I'll get Silver saddled. Million dollar outlaws captured, gold still missing. As you know, 
Those men have been in prison for six months, and still, the gold hasn't been recovered. We're staking everything on this plan of yours. I do hope it succeeds. We're ready to do our best, Governor. I'm sure of it. But again, I must impress on you the importance of your mission. Everything depends upon your success. We realize that, sir. The preliminary work has all been done. Though I never thought my friend Tonto would be playing such a part. Me, plenty bad fellow. Governor, you've done a thorough job. Now, when do you want Tonto to enter prison? This will answer your question. Red Dog captured. Sentenced to prison. Me ready, Kim Is This what we wait for. Of course you realize that once in prison, you'll be on your own. We'll help to make your escape as authentic as possible. But it is your job to convince the prisoners that it's on the level. Tonto knew the dangers when he offered his services. Uh, one of outlaws part Indian. Me hope him be easy to convince. When outlaws get chance for freedom, me think them lead Tonto to gold. Your role will be difficult, too. After the prison break, you'll both be in danger. Those men are killers. The future of your state is more important than any personal risk. Our plan must succeed. Thank you. Governor. Tonto. Well, Tonto, this is where we part company. Ah, uh, me go to meet prison guards. Everything is arranged. They'll put you in the cell block with Cameron and his gang. Now, once inside the prison, don't make your move too fast. You've got to gain the confidence of the gang. Me be plenty patient, Kimisabe. Me be in no hurry. Frank Cameron will beg Red Dog to help him escape. You go to camp near prison? Yes. I'll keep in touch with the contact man inside the prison. When you're ready to make your break, I'll be all set to play my part. Uh, you use name of Stark? Right. Good luck. Be careful, Tom. Yes, Kimisabe. Hey, Dad, open up. Got a new customer for you. Yeah, that's him, all right, Frank. <laughs> well, we got some real class in this place now. Hey, Red Dog. I thought I read someplace where you'd never be caught. Red Dog not be here long. Me get up. Nobody gets out of this prison, Indian, unless it's in a pine box. Hey, Red Dog, you gonna escape? You got plan? <laughs> He's probably got some secret Indian trick, Redo. That right, Red Dog? <laughs> you gonna squeeze out through a crack in the wall? <laughs> Let all you want, white man. Red Dog be free while you rot in cell. Lay off him, Billy. Maybe he has got something up his sleeve. Red Dog's smart man. Mm. The time he gets out is when his sentence is up. According to what the judge said, that'll be 40 years from now. I think we got a long time to wait for five years. Yeah, we got something to wait for. You talk too much. Red Dog, my name's Frank Cameron. I'd like to be friends with you. Red Dog, not one friend. Oh, don't pay no attention to Billy here. He's a little unhappy being cooped up so long. I think I can help you, Red Dog. Red Dog, mm -hmm. sleep, no talk. You can trust me. That's Rado. He'll tell you I'm a fair man. And I got some angles that might help. That's right, Red Dog. Frank is a good man with Indian. Red Dog, it might pay you to listen to me. Red Dog. How's it going, Red Dog? Still the silent treatment, huh? I don't blame you for not trusting people. I'm the same way myself. But we're both in here for breaking the law, and that ought to give us something in common. Maybe. And you only want me to take you with me when make escape. What's so wrong with that? Red Dog do things alone, not need help from anyone. I can offer you something in return. Me and the boys have got a fortune hidden on the outside. Now who's shooting his mouth off? I'm running things, Billy. Outside or inside. Get it? Yeah, I get it. I figure it's worth a cut to get out of this place. How about it, Red Dog? Quarter of a million dollars in gold, if you take us with you. That's a lot of gold. You heard about that million dollar federal gold robbery? That was us, Red Dog. I figured the whole job. The law tried to get us to break, but we didn't tell them a thing. It's all there waiting for us on the outside. It proves to here? I'll show you where it is, and part of it's yours. If we all get out together. Let me think it over. Maybe it's not easy for so many to get out. No, forget it, Frank. He ain't got brains enough to break out. You call Red Dog stupid for him? I didn't mean nothing. Look, if you got plans, let's have it all. We've heard for more than a week as a talk. Let me think it over. Hey, 
Stay where down. Let me set things up. Escape tomorrow. What about us? You go with me. Red Dog has decided. Listen close to what we say. We not miss a word, friend. Tomorrow we work on North Wall. There'll be ladder there where two of us work. At two o'clock, one of two guards be there. Others be at South Wall where there be trouble. Red Dog has friend with the horses and guns on the other side of Wall. When me give signal, we go over. Now, how did you arrange all that? Me have contact inside prison. Him get word out to bring enough horses and guns for all of us. Red Dog say we sleep now. The Indian always have rest before we go into battle. Think white man use good sense if him do same thing. Yeah, but well, what about this friend of yours, Indian? You heard the man. We're gonna sleep. Now shut that mouth of yours and sleep. Don't get any ideas, pal. One more step and you come down on your back. All of you, get to work. This ain't no sewing circle. All right. Break it to that wall. Go ahead. I'll watch these men here. All right, you. Come on down. Now, over the wall. Keep working. Come on, Red Dog. I've been waiting here hours. You paid to wait. What about guns? You got them? Don't get anxious, kid. I take orders from Red Dog. Give men guns. Well, I guess you know what you're doing. They're hanging on the saddle horns. You got a name, friend? Yeah. Stark. Stark, huh? Now, it looks like you've been cut up real good, Stark. Who did it? A wise kid like you who asks too many questions? You don't ask him no more. Which way we ride for gold? You just ride, Red Dog. I'll lead the way. Well, Tano, it looks as if our plan is working. Ah, uh, but we must be careful of one name, Billy. I'll watch him. It's getting awful hot, Frank. How far we gotta go? Oh, a couple more hours. We'll stop when we get out of this country. What's the matter, Stark? Ain't you thirsty? You saved me water for that fancy horse of yours. Kid, I learned a long time ago. Too much water in this hot sun is bad for a man. You know, I wish I could figure out what it is about you, Stark. That voice of yours. Now, what is it, Billy? You looking for trouble again? No, it's his voice, Frank. It's uh, just something about it. I've been thinking about it ever since we started riding. Oh, you've been cooped up in jail so long, you've been hearing the voices in your head. I don't know. Much more of this son, and the kid's liable to think I'm his long-lost brother. Come on, let's ride. here. Ghost town of Rimrock ahead. That's where you hide gold? That's right, but don't get any ideas. It'd take you five years to find it without the help of me and my boys. Good thing we stash supplies, too. I'm hungry. Stark. <laughs> Billy, you gone nuts? No, I just got smart. Touch it and you're dead, Redskin. Watch him, Redo. What is it, Billy? I just figured out who our friend Stark really is. And this will prove it. Silver bullets. Silver bullets? That's right. He's the Lone Ranger. 
Dope fell into the place when I remembered where I'd seen that white stallion of his. The Lone Ranger travels with Indian. The Indian I ride with is smart. Red Dog here is stupid. I tricked him just like I tricked you. You die for this white man. Cut the act, Redskin. You're both gonna die. Hold it, Billy. I know a way Red Dog can prove he's on the level. Yeah, how? Kill him. Cut a million dollars, Red Dog killed ten men. Red Dog took good care of him. Now let's ride. Hold it, Frank. I'm gonna stick my claim on that white stallion in his. my way. He's got to learn sooner or later. Easy, boy. Easy. Him learn to hate you and not forget. Red Dog's right, Billy. Take it easy. Not a one-man horse, Billy. You never get it. Yeah, and you're lucky he didn't get you. Come on, let's go. You can buy a hundred horses like that after you get your cut of the gold. like a bank, does it, boys? Gold here? That's right, friend. A million dollars worth. Look, all I'm interested in right now is food. Let's eat. I'll go for that. We can spend the gold any time. Red Dog, not wait. Want gold now. All right, Red Dog, if that's the way you want it, you'll get what's coming to you. It'll all add up to a million Yankee dollars. Come on, take a look at it. Go on, it's part yours. It isn't often a man gets to see that much gold at one time. Looks good, don't it? Like I told you, you'll get what's coming to you. Hold it! Billy, 
That was your last bullet. I'm coming after you. Hold it, mister. You remember that silver bullet I took from you? Well, it's in my gun. And you're going to die with it. Right now. I'm coming, Billy. Don't you. Don't you. Let's join your friends. It's a long trip back to the state prison. I'll get going. And the people of this state owe you both a deep debt of gratitude. Well, Governor, we're glad we could help. If you ever need us again, please let us know. Uh, all four of us. Four? Uh, Red Dog, Stark, too. Them plenty mean outlaws. But when you get to know them, they're not bad fellows. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Santo. Young man, history will be proud of Tonto and the Lone Ranger. I own silver! Away! Of the wounded man. I'm going after them. Man. This is Pima land. You're trespassing. I saw two white men shoot one of your people. I followed them here. Into this canyon? Well, I thought so. When I got here, they had disappeared. And the Pima they shot. If there is one. Follow me. He was dead when I got here. Not after you got here? This is Willie Moon, member of the Pima tribe. It's standing there, Embry's oldest boy. Well, I'm sorry. The only other one he's got is the dumb kid. Dumb kid? For the last couple of months, these have been picking off the tribe's cattle. Well, can't the marshal find out who they are? Marshal? What does a white marshal care about Indian cattle? Still, he ought to know about it. He does. I wrote it myself for all the good it did. We had to take care of our own cattle. Standing Bear did anyway, being the chief's son. I'll get him to his father. I don't need your help. Kimasabe, never in all my life have I heard an Indian speak of a chief's son as a dumb kid. Tano, he wasn't raised as an Indian. He told me on the way here. He was lost as a child during the war and just recently returned. Uh, where you find him? Uh, he found me. Well, those two outlaws vanished. Outlaws vanish? The solid rock. Whoever they are, they certainly know this country. Uh, what do you think, Kimasabe? Well, I don't know, Tom. Look at this. Made by convict labor, state penitentiary. I found it where they vanished. And where he found you. That's right. Song of the setting sun. A song of death and sorrow. the word. 
words mean, Tunnel? They are very sad, Kimisabe. They say the sun is going away. Slow it is in its setting. Black bats will be swooping when the sun is gone. Don't it feel so, da? Shanda Talash, you The words mean it is all over. The spirit children are beneath. They are moving back and forth. They roll and play among the tufts of white eagle down. It is all over. He will not come back. He will not rise again. It is all over. And you still think we can have peace with the whites? Listen to me. You say our government cares nothing for us, but they have sent home our sons and daughters who were lost in the war. And how will we feed them? Our herd grows smaller every day. The marshal doesn't even answer my letter. I say fight while we have something to fight for. No! Him make trouble for his tribe. Him a fool. A fool or a rascal. And I don't think a fool. We will protect our cattle without war. Your son died trying to protect them. My father still has a son. Son that nobody can say is ever going to be a man or not. Why does Moon say he doubts the boy's manhood? Because it has not been proved yet, Kimisami. There is a test that every Indian must go through before he is a man among men. Alone and without weapons, he must face the terrible spirits of evil. Sometimes the young men die. No man can say how. No man can be held to blame for what the spirits do. You say your father still has a son. All right, then face the facts. You are his only son now, so you can't take chances. You must be careful. I'll prove I am a man now. Live or die. They're the ones I told you about. The ones who were there when Standing Bear was killed. Chief Embry, I am the Lone Ranger. This is my friend Tonto. I've heard of you. I've heard you were on our land. I believe we can help you. I found this where I lost your son's killers, the place Willie Moon found me. What does the writing say? It says, made by convict labor state penitentiary. Chief Embry, who is this man? My own sister's son. He was lost in battle when he was a small child. He has just come back to us. Are you sure, Chief Embry? When he was born, I took this from around my own neck and hung it around his as a birth gift. When he came back, it was still where I put it. I see. But now I know who the killers of my son are. Drake and Sloat, two white men. They stole some cattle from us before, went to prison for it. Now they are out, and they want revenge. They kill my son. And you must say so to the government. I'm sorry, Chief Embry. I cannot say of any man these are the murderers, unless I can prove it. You cannot say it about white men, you mean. But you could blacken my name easily enough because I'm an Indian. You are right, Willie Moon. No, I am an Indian and his friend. I give you your wish. Tonight you will face the spirits of evil. Tomorrow you will take your dead brother's place. You will guard the tribe's cattle with your life. Chief Embry, let us help you protect your son. If anything happens to my son, I will know that Willie Moon is right. I will lead my people into war again. Where were you headed for when you stopped here? Because my advice to you is go there. Tell me about this Indian test of manhood. What must he do to prove himself? He may have a strong medicine powder, Kimisabe, and throw it on fire. It open his ears and eyes to spirits, close them to men. Is he going to be there alone? Yes, Kimisabe, at a place sacred to his tribe. I can find that place, Kimisabe. I will know it by the signs. Find a towel. Maybe we can save his life. <laughs> into a soft spot the day they put you in our cell back in the state pen. Soft spot? 
I'm making you rich. I don't know. It seems like we're taking all the risks. No, stop your arguing. Let's have the news. The news is good. I've got Embry fired up to the point where by next week at this time, he'll be on the war path if he ain't dead. As next of kin, cattle will be ours. What about his son? Bright Eagle's going to get himself taken care of tonight by the spirits of evil. Spirits of what? I don't get it. Well, they got a thing where a boy goes out alone and wrestles with spirits. First, he knocks himself out with heap strong medicine powder. So he can't hear anybody coming up behind him. Get it? Where does this here wrestling match take place? Come on, I'll show you. Good place, Kim Sammy. Good. You're just in time. Yes, sir, this is going to be a real easy shot. Easy nothing. Spirits don't have guns. Spirits have these, Chief. Could be. Now, don't rush things when he gets here. Let him work up a lot of smoke with that medicine powder. All right? Keep out of sight. Hold it. What do you want? Fighting. Your robe. You would not dare, only you know I carry no weapon. Hurry, there's no time for talk. I do not need your medicine. I will make smoke with green branches. Right, Eagle, your robe will not be dishonored. You'll see for yourself. Come on. He's wearing my robe. You said that you'd put not. Right, Eagle. Over there. had not stopped me, I would be down there, my spirit far away, not knowing they were at my back. Neither will Taro. If they see his face, they'll know it isn't you. It's up to us to stop them. Wait. Give them a chance to hang themselves. Yeah, let's give them a little more time. Give them a chance to get real good and dopey. Let him prove himself. Dishonored. Go on with your ritual. We'll camp nearby and take these prisoners to the Pima village in the morning. You can't do that. The ninjas are savages. You call us savages? That's very funny.
These are the ones who stole our cattle and killed my son. We have real evidence against them now. We'll send for the marshal as soon as Bright Eagle returns. He will return when the spirits have spoken. These two, we keep them in that corral. I'll stand guard over them. Come, friend, let us talk. Sit down. There. Call your men. Hakko, Hakko! Hakko, Hakko! They must have heard that shot. Yeah, well, this will stop them. Let's get moving. The horses are on the other side of the rock. Let me call out, hey! They got away. Get the horses, quick. See if you can. Embry's kid. You might come in handy to trade with. Come on. I think I know where we can find them. No use. We don't find them here. Through there. One son. Now listen. I want to make a deal. You listening? Willie Moon, my own blood, my sister's son. We're listening, Moon. Good. First, they get rid of you, Ranger. As soon as you go, we trade the tribe's cattle for the boy's life. Our cattle? The life of my people against the life of my last son? Tell him no. He cannot have our cattle. I'm going to try something. Talk to Moon. Offer him part of the herd, anything. But stall him as long as you can. How about it? Are you dealing? Or would you rather have him this way in pieces? I'm going, Moon. Talk to him. Keep his attention. trail up there. My one hope is to find it. You'd better go back to the chief. He may need you. Ah. Your time's running out, Embray. But if you take all our cattle, my people will starve. No, not half. We want the whole herd, or you'll get him dead. Thank <laughs> you. 
Send the marshal back for the prisoners. They told us the whole story. The three of them were in prison together. My sister's son? He is not your sister's son. Moon killed him to get this amulet. So he could come here, fool you, kill you maybe, and get your cattle. It's all over now. You can be proud that you still have a son to lead your people in peace. Adios. Ranger. And thanks. I don't see. 